My name's Tom Bell. Actually, Thomas Devereaux Bell III. But since my grandfather died when my father was one, he dropped the junior. So I became junior. So Thomas Devereaux Bell, Jr. So at Tennessee, I um, went in as an engineering major because that's what my dad wanted me to do. And that lasted um, one semester. I went back to school and uh, thoroughly bored now with my uh, regular classwork because uh, having watched that process, wow, that was really something. And so I finished up um, that um, period of school and then um, Clower called me and I did a couple other things with those guys. So we would only work 50 minutes out of the hour and then for 10 minutes we'd have to go and take a salt tablet you know, and drink a bunch of water, and then we, you know, it's something really to be valued. If you can get yourself in situations where you are clearly over your head and having to learn on the job, and you have people that have enough confidence in you or who are desperate enough to give you responsibilities that you shouldn't have, uh, it, you really grow very quickly. You either die or you grow. You either flame out. Uh, or you figure out some way to get it done and you, you know, your learning curve escalates. Um, I said, so, is he really going to see the Secretary of State? He said, oh yeah. And is the Secretary of State really going to wait for him? He said, oh yeah. He said, um, and, if, and if it had been the President of the United States, he would have done the same thing. I mean, he gets involved in a conversation with somebody and that's all he's thinking about. Well, you did it again. I said, I did. He said, yeah, yeah. He said, the guy says, <laughs> he says, that's the only non-physicist that I've ever talked to who actually understood my work. <laughs> and that happened over and over again. So I went into the chief financial officer who I'd got to be friends with, and I said, you know, I think Dick's got an alcohol problem. <laughs> and he laughed. He said, so it took you, what, eight months to figure that out? <laughs> He said, oh, my God, Tom. He said, where have you been? I said, well, how bad is it? Oh, it was, you know, it was pretty bad. We just had to work around it. And I said, well, you know, I need to talk to him. We need to get him some help. He said, no, I tried that a year ago. And he, and he basically said, you ever bring that up again, it'll be your last day here. And so we re took all our guys, moved them up in the organization, which they wanted to do, gave them a bunch of options in the new company, I've uh, got Friedman, uh, as, who is our uh, private equity partner. They bought 28%, which is the people we bought out. And we set about a two-year process of restructuring the business. If we know that people are willing to pay us more than something is worth, and probably more than they'll ever pay us in the future, and we know that there is no, no strategy that we can employ to duplicate that value by holding the asset, what should we do? Um, when you're doing something and it's not working, as soon as you figure out it's not going to work, quit doing it, no matter how exposed you are, because it's not going to get better. When you find out that someone is not able to perform, then you need to get that person out of there sooner than later. I don't care whether you have somebody to replace them or not. The longer he stays, the more you punish the organization and the more you punish him or her. All these little things that I've learned over the years, rules of the road that I sort of pass, try to pass along. Probably the most important of those is you need to know when to go.